When Mariupol finally fell on May the 17th, almost nothing had been untouched by the fighting. In the months since, Russia has been working on its own new vision. They say it is reconstruction. Ukrainians see destruction. Я думаю, что сейчас вот идёт массовое уничтожение всего, не только украинской культуры, а в целом культуры Мариуполя, потому что Mariupol has been under Russian occupation for 7 months now, and they've been busy not repairing buildings, but demolishing them to create a new Mariupol. Karina managed to escape her home in Ukraine. She's living in Leon in northern Spain. Her father was shot dead by a sniper. Her brother was taken in a bus in an evacuation to Russia. Her mother and grandmother are still in Mariupol. We've seen lots of social media posts, satellite images of bulldozers. Why are we seeing so much uh, destruction, construction in Mariupol? First of all, it's clear for all of Mariupol, it's done to hide their crimes, to hide everything they've done, because it's not for the best life, 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 it's not for the best life. Пришла жизнь в город. Нет, это делается для того, чтобы скрыть все преступления. Но э, есть такая фраза: интернет помнит все. But we've been following a trail of clues, collecting social media posts and satellite imagery to build up a picture of what's going on. It's impossible for Western journalists to get to the city. We verified more than 90 demolitions or notices of demolition. This represents the most conservative estimate for the scale of the transformation. Each building was once someone's home or business. The most famous was the old drama theater in the center of Mariupol. In early March, Ukrainian civilians were sheltering there. They wrote children in huge letters on the road outside so that it would be visible from the sky. The airstrike hit in the middle of the morning. Hundreds of people are thought to have been killed. For months, it stood as a crumpled shell. But pro-Russian journalists have advertised the local regime's plans to rebuild it. A facade has been put up around decorated with giant portraits of Russian cultural icons, like the poet Pushkin. Ukrainians see a different motive. На перше місце окупанти виводять знищення історичних пам'яток і роблять це зухвало, цинічно і, звісно, з елементами російської пропаганди. Алевтіна Швецова, як Каріна, барелі вирішила з її життя. Вона жила на 75B Міру Авеню, яка транслюється до Піс Авеню. Це зараз було виробнено в гонорі Ленін. Тепер її дом, в історичному центрі, вирішено вирішено. До яких ми мріяли повернутися після деокупації, просто торкнутися стін, ти розумієш, що там все згоріло. Але ця можливість повернутися та побачити це на власні очі, на жаль, рашисти забирають в нас цю можливість і просто трощать і знищують місто до непізнаваності. More than two and a half thousand buildings sustained damage in the fighting. Nearly half of all the buildings in the city. The Conflict Observatory, a US NGO, used artificial intelligence to map the extent of the destruction from February onwards. A city that flourished over 300 years, transformed in a matter of weeks. Into a blank canvas for plans like these, drawn up in Moscow to turn Mariupol into a model Russian city. Depending on the outcome of the war, it could represent the ultimate fate of large parts of Ukraine. This is a decree signed back in July. It's just a sheet of A4, but it represents a complete change in a country's heritage and culture. Behind this are multiple documents, hundreds of pages long, with details of how Russia aims to turn the city into one of its own. On the second page, it lays bare its intention to hold the city under Russian control for the next two decades and grow the population they either killed, maimed or drove away. They work out it'll take 13 years to get back to pre-war numbers, Flick through the document a few pages to page 14 
and you'll see the plans for the old town. As you can see on this satellite image, the traditional low-rise buildings that gave the centre its charm flattened and replaced by monumental apartment blocks. We came across this video from a Spanish-Russian influencer. Serán barrios enteros que muy pronto darán hogares a muchísimos ciudadanos de esta ciudad que desgraciadamente perdieron sus casas a raíz de los combates. She's been filming in the region over the last few months, part of a propaganda effort to show the benefits of Russian rule. Mariupol, República Popular de Donetsk. If we pause this video posted on Twitter in October, we can see the city's sign behind her. Before, this sign was yellow and blue in the colours of Ukraine. This isn't just a question of history, of culture, of identity, as important as all those things are. This could be a serious breach of international law. Back in the UK, I showed all this to Professor Alexandra Zanthaki, the UN Special Rapporteur on Cultural Rights and an expert in international law. I think what is important is that culture is not used um, as a form of propaganda. Otherwise, uh, we can't talk about um, um, cleansing, an idea of cultural cleansing. This is the image that the local regime wants to put out. New housing estates, happy residents and Russian flags everywhere. People are being filmed moving in. But homes are being demolished at a much faster rate. The only warning many residents get, an eviction notice shortly before the bulldozers arrive. And more immediately than the rebuilding, they're subject to other methods of control. In so-called filtration camps like this, residents are questioned by authorities, a method of identifying those who might pose a threat to the Russian-backed regime. Schools are being reconstituted, with teachers sent for training in Russia and Ukrainian textbooks swapped for Russian ones. Children have been encouraged to join military training. У меня есть двоюродный брат, который тоже в Мариуполе. Он сейчас ходит в русскую школу, и он говорит нам нас учат все по новой, нас учат всему русскому, гимн России, полностью все учебники на русском. То есть, к сожалению, уже в этот этап уничтожения украинской культуры и в принципе культуры Мариуполя уже, к сожалению, прошел. We asked the Donetsk People's Republic, the Russian Ministry of Construction, and several other organizations for comment, but received no reply. Karina is at least safe, but all she can do is wait. Who can say for how long?